So we're going to look at sampling and estimation. Sampling and estimation. To start with, what is a sample? A sample is simply a small proportion of a big population. It's a subset of the entire big set. And therefore, sampling is simply the process of selecting a subset from a larger population. So sampling is actually the process of selecting a subset, a small sample from a larger population in order to make inferences or to draw conclusions about the entire population. So it is often impractical for us to collect data from the entire population due to sampling errors. Why would you go for a sample rather than the entire population which we call a census? We have a number of constraints streaming from financial, time. What other constraints could you go for for picking a sample rather than the entire population? Sometimes a sample is sufficient. Okay, you need just a teaspoon to know that the entire pot has enough salt or not. Sometimes accuracy, a sample. Of course, a larger sample is more accurate than a small sample. Then also the universe size, no matter how much time we have and finances we have, it's almost impractical to survey the entire population because of certain constraints. So there are different types of sampling that we need to know. These sampling um, procedures could be divided into what we call probability and non-probability sampling. So this is where research becomes very interesting. The probability sampling methods have to do with numbers. So examples of probability methods, we have what we call simple random sampling, where we will pick respondents having an equal chance of being selected by minimizing the degree of biasness. So you randomly select them. Each one has an equal chance. An example is when there's a rough or draw, the numbers are just picked equally. This is what we call stratified sampling. This is where the population is divided into distinctive groups, which we call strata. And these will have certain similar characteristics from which a random sample will be selected from the strata. We also have what we call cluster sampling, where we're going to subdivide the entire population into clusters, and a random sample is selected from the clusters. So this data will represent all members selected within the certain clusters, southern province, northern province, those could be clusters. Then we also have what we call non-probability methods, which may include convenience sampling method. Convenience, like the term denotes where you're picking uh, out of convenience. You're doing a case study of Unilas, of UNSA, of CBU, because you are conveniently there. You also have what we call judgment-based sampling, where you're going to pick respondents based on what? Uh, experience. It's called purposive. For instance, you want to survey the impact of COVID. Those that have experienced COVID, purposively you pick them because they are the right for respondents that have had an experience of what you want to survey. We also have what is called snowball sampling method, which is a sampling method that is um, investigative. We pick a small sample which grows and grows like the snow grows. So we go to another key concept, which is called estimation. Estimation basically involves us using data from a sample to make inferences about the entire population, such as the means, the proportions, and the variances, when they are often unknown. So we have various statistical techniques that are employed to estimate these parameters. So we have what we call a point estimate, which is simply a single value, which is used to give an approximation of the entire population. We usually use the mean, which is an average. We also have what we call an interval estimation, which perhaps gives you a range of parameters within which we could be confident. For instance, we are going to give a price range of what millimeter 
prices are currently at or cement. We know that cement could be approximately 120 to 135. That's a range. So we are within an interval, this approximation. Then we have a confidence interval, which is simply uh, a percentage that is calculated with a certain confidence interval, which gives an estimate within which the ranges will what will fall. Then we also have a margin of error, which is the maximum amount by which the mean would differ. So I'm going to talk about the three formulas that we're going to look at. Sample size is given by Z squared S squared over error squared. Or sample size formula is given by Z squared over P times PQ divided by error. Or our standard error is given by standard deviation over square root of n. So meaning when you cross multiply, here we're going to have square root of n is equal to s over standard error. And meaning our sample size can also be given by simply squaring our standard error and the standard deviation. So this is, these are the three main formulas that we need to know whenever we're being asked to calculate the sample size. What sample size are we looking at? Then we also have confidence interval. Confidence interval is a range. is given by the mean plus minus the error, margin of error. So to calculate this error, sometimes we can use confidence interval is equal to plus minus z standard deviation of a square root of n. This is our confidence interval. Our confidence interval with in proportions is equal to proportion plus minus z and a deviation of a square root of n. Since in proportions here, this one will be pq over n. Now, a proportion with the success, for instance, we have p is 20%. Or 0.2. Our Q will therefore be 1 minus the P. So uh, 0.7. All right. Now I said I'm going to teach you a song. So there's a song that I'm going to teach you where we're going to learn how to control what we have the confidence level, sweetness level, our alpha, then we also have our z, the total test. So we have three, four common percentages. We have 99%, we have 98%, we have 95%, and we have 90%. The difference from 100 is called the significance level. This is called the confidence level. So to subtract from 100, what are we going to have here? 1% here. 2% here, 5%, and here, 10%. When we convert this into decimal, we're going to get 0 0.01. Here, 0 0.02. Here, 0 0.05. Here, 0 point what? 1, 0. So this is how we find our alpha. Now, how then do we calculate the Z values? So I'm going to teach you now where the song comes in. So the Z songs are done as follows. You just said one minus alpha over two. And you find the Z value, which you read from inside the table. So let's start with 95%, for instance. My alpha at 95% is what? 0 0.05. So it's simply one minus 0 0.05 divided by 2. So what I'm going to get is 0 0.975. Then we're going to read this one from inside the table. 
Let's read this from inside the table. 0 0.975, I taught you how to read from inside the table in the previous class. So check from what is 0 0.975 from inside the table. What are you getting? Is it 1.96? So 0 0.975. So those of you who missed the initial class, the forward reading, if you have 1.23, you go under 1.2 and 0 0.03. The probability is 0 0.8907. The backward wave, check for 0 0.98907 to get the Z. So just get this figure 1.2 and 0 0.03. Collectively, this gives you the Z is 1.23. In this case, we've been told to check what is the probability for the Z. What's the Z for this probability? 0 0.9750. So we go to 0 0.9750 here. So the Z is simply 1.9 and the 6 there, 1.96. So here, the Z for 95% is 1.96. All right, so how about the Z for 99%? We know that our alpha is 0 0.01. So what we do, we do one minus 0 0.01 divided by two. What we get? So we calculate, what are you getting there? What are you getting when you calculate that? And zero one divided by two, then one minus answer. One zero one divided by two. Zero point nine nine. Zero point what? Nine nine five. Zero point nine nine five. So let's look for this one inside the table. What is it equivalent to? Zero point nine nine five zero. Equivalent to this figure here, right? 2.58. Even this one, they're equidistant. So 2.57. So what happens when you're picking, you can get the smallest and equidistant, 2.575. Point, 2 All right, or 58, either of them, it's okay. Now, the same happened with the rest of them. When you do this, you're going to get 2.33. When you do this, you're going to get 1.645. So for those of you who are new, I follow my previous class, but I don't want to confuse you for now. I just want you to memorize this table. That's where the stone comes in. We have 99, 98, 95, 90. The difference is called the significance level. So we have 1%, 2%, 5%, and 10%. It's the differences from 100. Then we divide this by 100, we get 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.05, and 0 0.10. Now the Z is what I'm interested in. For the first guy, 99% is the same as 2.58. 98, 2.33. 95, 1.96. 90, 1.645. So the first two consecutive ones are two two point something, and the last two are one point something. Now, this is a song I want you to take because it's going to help you. Let's go together. Let's rewrite that. What's our confidence level? Let's get the four confidence levels. We have what, 99%, then followed by? 98%. 98, then 98, 95, 90. 90. The sequence level, the difference from 100, we have what? Uh, one percent, huh? Two percent, two percent, five percent, mm -hmm. and ten percent. Correct. Then the alpha is it divided by hundred? What do we have here? Zero point zero, zero, zero one. Mm -hmm. 
0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
a variance has been given as 25 and error has been given as within plus minus five. Here, as, as find the sample size, our confidence level is 98% and our P maybe is 20%. So we are being asked to find a sample size for each of them. So part A, what formula we're going to use? N is equal to Z squared, S squared over E squared. So our Z, what is our Z at 0 0.05? 1.96. Our standard deviation, what? 4. Let's square it. And our error has been given as what? 3. Mm -hmm. Compute the sample size. All right. Then here, second part here. What have we been given? Everything. Our Z at 1% is what? Two point. Two point five eight. Our variance has already been given, so there's no need of squaring this. So we are writing twenty five as it is. Don't square it unless you want to write five in square it. Then our error always comes within, so within five. So you put that. You get the answer there. Right. But C, we can't use formula one. We use a formula for the proportions. We can't use this one. We can use what? P and Q. So what is our Z at 98%? 2.33. Our P is 0 0.2, meaning our Q is 0 0.8. Where do you find the 0 0.8? 1 minus 1 minus what? Uh, from My 1 minus 0 0.2. Then the error is given as 1%. So it's a percentage. You put it here. So see, I'm not interested in the answers. So I'm interested in the principle. Here, what are we learning? This is already our S squared. So we didn't square it here. Here, we're given standard deviation. So you put it as it is. So how do we know they are looking for a sample size? They will ask you what sample size is required. So sometimes we'll be asked to find the confidence interval. But A, you are given what? The mean, maybe it's 10. And you are given our sample size, maybe it's 36. Our standard deviation, maybe it's 12. And our alpha, 0 0.05. But B, we're given our mean, maybe it's 20. Our sample size, maybe it's uh, 64. Our standard deviation, maybe they give us um, 5.76. Maybe they give us a variance, 5.76. And maybe level of significance, they give us 1%. Then here, they've given us a proportion, maybe 10%. Our sample size is 50. And here, we've given our confidence level, maybe it's 98%. So let's find part A. What's the formula for confidence interval? It is the mean plus minus Z. And the deviation of a square root of n. So our mean is 10. What is our z at 0 0.05? What is our z? 1.1? 1. 1. 1. And our standard deviation is 12. Square root of what? 86. So here, 10. 1.96. So this is called the standard error. And calculate these two. Standard error, square root of 36 is 6. 6 into 12 is 2. Oh. And when we apply these two, we get a margin of error. So this, by that one, we get what? 
92. And the confidence interval, we start first by subtracting 10 minus 6 and 10 plus that. So 10 minus 3.92, 6.08. Then 10 plus that one, we get 18.92. So we can comment in terms of this confidence level. So we are 95% confident that our true mean will lie between 6.08 and 13.92. So this is a confidence interval. It's a range. Let's go to part... Uh, Part B. Part B, we're going to use the same formula, except that we've been given the variance. So if you want, we can square root. What is the square root of um, uh, 576? Square root of 576 is what? 24, as standard deviation. So we can use the same formula here. What is our mean? Point plus minus. What is our Z at 1%? Who remembers? 2.58. Our standard deviation is what? 24. Our sample size is 64. So what is the square root of 64? 8. 8 into 24. Uh, three. So 3 is called the standard. Three. When we apply the standard error times the z value, we get the margin of error. So when you apply three times what? 2.58. What do we get? 7.74. 7.74. So when you subtract here, we get 4.26. When we add, we get 27.76. So this is what we call our confidence interval. This is what we call our confidence interval. So we are 99% confident that our true mean will lie between 12.26 and 27.76. Then part C, lastly, a given our proportion is 10%, meaning this is 0.10. Okay, somebody guess, what is our Q? If this is 10%, our Q is 0.9. 0 0.9. Our nine, our n has been given as 50. And what is our confidence level? 98%. Can somebody tell me? At 98%, what is our z? 2.33. 2.33. Correct. Cool. Confidence interval for proportion is P plus minus z PQ over n. So here our P is 10%, our Z is 2.33, our standard error, 10% times 90% of our N, which is what? 50. Okay, let's go to part D. Part D, we're going to use the same formula. Let's go to part D. Part D, we're going to use the same formula. Let's go to part D. Part D, we're going to use the same formula. We apply it to 2.33. Zero point zero nine. So if you want, you can say 10% plus minus 9%. So when you subtract 10 minus 9, it's 1%. 10 plus 9 is 19%. So we are 90 what? 98% confident that our true proportion, not mean, true proportion will be between 1% and 19%. Now, examiners sometimes will be very tricky. They will tell you that a 95% confidence interval has uh, maybe 10 to 30. Mm -hmm. So find the mean, find mean. The mean is simply given by the lower bound plus the upper bound divided by two. So 10 plus 30 divided by two. So this is 40 divided by two. 
But B, find the error. The error is the difference, 10 minus what? 30 divided by two. So error, you have 20 divided by two, we get plus minus 10. Okay. Sometimes you ask to find the standard deviation. It's simply the range divided by six. You subtract 30 minus 10 divided by six. Six is a constant number, which is 3.33. And finally, they can ask you to find what? The sample size N. So N is given by what? Z squared, S squared over R squared. What is our Z? At 95%, 1 1.96. What is our standard deviation? We've just calculated 3.33. Then our error, we calculated it, so it's 10. Then you can get your answer there. Now, how do exam questions look like? So in an exam question, it will give you question number one. So here we're given the following edges of 10 customers. Then if the first three customers in the table are chosen to estimate the entire, what is the sampling error? We gave you the formula for sampling error. Sampling error is given by what? Okay. what? Sample size. So we can calculate using your statistics to find the standard deviation here. Right? Whatever standard deviation, if it's 10 or 100 over the square root of n, which is 3, the first 3. That's a whole idea they're trying to test you. Then I'm interested in the second question. Second question has more, more stuff that I need you to now apply. So we are told in this question that a sample has an average of 78.25. So what does that mean? Average means mean, 78 what? Two five. What else are we given? Standard deviation is 22.5, 22.5. But A, find a 90% confidence interval if the sample size is 40. So 90% confidence interval. What's the formula for confidence interval? The mean, plus minus z, standard deviation over square root of n. So our mean is 78.25. Our z is what? At 90%, who remembers the song? One point what? Six four five. Our standard deviation is 22.5. What? what n are we using here? Forty. 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 Of forty. Then you find your your lower bound and your upper bound. Mm -hmm. The second part, they're being asked to find a ninety percent confidence interval. Now here they've just changed the sample size, which is what seventy five. So everything else will remain the same, except that. Our sample size here will be what? 75. What are they trying to teach us? The higher the sample size, the more constricted the interval will be. So if I were to ask you, if here we're going to find 2,8, and here we're going to find 4,6, which one do you think is more accurate? The one with the bigger gap or the one with the smaller gap? The one with the smaller gap. Yes, the one with the smaller gap because you are more accurate. So here, what they're trying to say is 
what is the difference? Same confidence interval, but different sample sizes. The difference is simply on the fact that a higher sample size is more accurate. So it has a smaller confidence interval. If you're going to, if somebody is going to tell you to say, I'm going to come uh, and meet you between 10.30 and 10.40, and somebody will tell you between 10 and 12, the one who's more precise is the one with the what? A smaller interval. Are we together? Yes. All right. So here, question number three, maybe we can end from there. I've taught the whole topic in uh, the shortest possible time I could. Please pay particular attention. The population of cool drink supplied by a vending machine is given by a variance of what? 115. So variance is 115. So meaning the standard deviation is the square root of 115. And the machine was activated how many times? 61 times. On each occasion, the cool drink supplied was 185. So our mm -hmm. mean was 185. So we're being asked to find a 99% confidence interval. Right? Find 9% confidence interval for the mean. Who remembers the formula for the mean? And then what's the formula? Mean plus minus what? Mean plus the minus standard deviation over standard deviation square root over Correct. a. Our mean is 185. Our z is what? 2.58. Then if you're given the variance, if you want to be smart, you can square root. Instead of square rooting here, this standard error is the same as what? The variance over n and square root both of them. It's the same thing. Then here n is what? 61. So if you put the square root here, you can only put it if this is a variance. But if you want, do the grid one way. Get rid it first and put it there. Should cut it. Part two. What sample size is required to be within? So what within is always the error. They will not say you are given an error of something. So what's the formula for sample size? Z squared, S squared over what? E squared. So to be within at the point nine nine. So 0.99, it is 2.58. Okay. Variance has already been given as what? 115. Why are we not squaring this one? Because it's already variance. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finished a very long topic within 25 minutes. I send you homework based on what has been done. Unless you have any questions, please speak now or forever hold your peace. Thank you so much for your time.